Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Nikah or marriage in Islam is one of the most important institutions and bonds between human beings that you can establish because from it is the family. That when a man chooses a suitable wife and the wife has chosen a suitable husband and they unite for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is one of the greatest bonds that you can have. And from it flows children and the establishment of the Islamic community because it's the family. And as the scholars mention also that children, that the first madrasa, the first school for the children is the mother. So that's why it's very important for us as men to choose righteous good wives and as women to choose righteous and honorable husbands that will help them be better because that goal one of the goals of the marriage the maqsud is that it's to build that righteous family to help you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better along with that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Inma azwajikum wa awladikum fitna fahdhuru fahdhuruhum o kama qala subhana. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, which I gave the meaning in the ayat because I don't think I recited the ayat correctly, I've forgotten the ayat, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which means that verily in your in, in that verily in your uh, families can be a fitna. So beware. So that would seem on the surface to negate exactly what I've just said about having the family. But in fact, when you look at the Sharia in its completeness and look at the various evidence, it shows everything is in its rightful place. That ayat is in reference to the person who has a family that busy them, busies them, busies his, the, the person who has a family that busies him from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your family is supposed to strengthen you. And how are some ways that we can do that? How are, what are some of the ways in which the family can be an actual fitna for you? For example, with the children, if you're busy spoiling the children, you're not keeping a balance, but you're spending all your money and your wealth because you want them to have the best fashion and you want them to be in the best schools and everything else by any means necessary, meaning not taking a halal means, by spending, getting haram money in order to make sure your children have the best education. Well, I have to take interest from the bank so that way my children go to private schools or that they can go to the university. No, then that can be a fitna because you've taken the haram to try to please your family. Or the person who's a spendthrift on their wife and the wife who's a spendthrift, that she is wasteful of her money. So then she causes a fitna for her husband. He's always got to buy her gold. He's always got to buy her, try to please her, regardless of whether it's halal or haram, and putting a hardship on him as a husband instead of working together in unity to strengthen their bond in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any way in which the family can take you away from the remembrance of Allah, then that can be a fitna. That's where it falls into being a fitna. Because it's taking, away, taking you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And vice versa, you could have a disobedient husband, a husband that drinks alcohol, husband that doesn't pray, sleeps through the prayers, and he doesn't wake you up and help you be a better Muslimah, a better wife. Or he doesn't even care if you wear hijab. 
Some husbands are so bad that they dislike the hijab. Why are you wearing that? I don't want you to cover your face. Don't go out like that. You're going to embarrass me. Allah has ordered them to cover, but you don't, you're not pleased with that. So that shows the fitna. That shows that that husband is the fitna. So this is why it's important to choose a righteous spouse. Or a spouse that is unfaithful. By choosing, by having a spouse that is unfaithful, that can be a fitna. A woman, she wants to, she doesn't want to wear hijab. She doesn't want to wear proper hijab. And she goes, she puts perfume on. How many people, and we see this spreading, unfortunately, in some of the places where they have a lot of jealousy, they're becoming weak with that. I see this in, in many of the Arab countries where you might, the wife may... She advertises her body, open ibaya and very shapely, and showing that to everyone. And the husband is walking behind her, just grinning. He's happy just to have a showpiece wife. But he's getting major sins for that because she's a fitna. She's a fitna for people. She's a fitna for him because she's not giving him, she's not reminding him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but she is causing him harm to the, in, in their religion. So this is how and why nikah is very important in choosing a righteous spouse. Nikah, in the Arabic language, it refers to actually having relations, having sexual relations. This is the origin of nikah in the Arabic language. But it is also used in majaz, which we say as a... I think we might say, in English, we might say it's uh, an analogy where it is used to refer to the marital bond. So it's become common for us to use nikah regarding the marital bond. Because that's what takes place in the marital bond is that you have relations with your spouse. And nikah is authenticated or is affirmed by the Qur'an, the Sunnah, and the Ijma of the, 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 the scholars in Islam, in the Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فَلَا تُهِلَّ لَهُ مِن بَعْدِ حَتَّى تَنْكِهَا زَوْجٍ غَيْرَ That it is not permissible for him, meaning his, his wife, his ex-wife is no longer permissible for him if he is if they have divorced and it's a final divorce until she marries another husband and then they were divorced. So this is talking about a specific type of situation. But this is one of the evidences for nikah in general, for, for the marriage. And here in this verse, it is referred to, nikah here is referred to in the linguistic sense regarding uh, sexual relations. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, حَتَّ تَنْكِهَا زَوْجٍ غَيْرَ meaning until she has had relations with uh, her new husband. And then if they happen to get divorced, then it would be permissible for that initial husband, her ex-husband, and her to uh, get married again after the other husband if they have divorced for whatever their circumstances. So that's showing us in the linguistic sense what nikah means in, from, the Quran, from the Quran, from Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنْكِهُ مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ nisa." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, marry those who you are able to from the women. Meaning, if you are able to get married, uh, then, uh, then do so. Letting us know that marriage is a part of Islam. It's a part of building that Islamic household. And there's many ayats in the Quran to substantiate that. And there's many uh, ah hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which substantiate that for us. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, Anikah sunnati faman ragiba an sunnati falaysa minni. The Prophet ﷺ said that to marry, because it's from my sunnah, or marriage is from my sunnah, it's from my way. And whoever desires other than my sunnah, then they are not from me. Meaning that they are not following the, the path of righteousness. They're not following the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not necessarily meaning that they're outside the fold of Islam. So it, it's showing us though the importance and that is from the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the fundamental of the religion. 
this Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and it's from his way to marry. He married. He had multiple wives. And the Prophet said, Tankihu takthiru fa inni mubahin bikum al umum yom al qiyamah. So the Prophet also ordered us with nikah, ordered us with marriage. He said, uh, you know, he ordered his, his community in general to marry. Mar he, won, he encouraged us to marry and ordered it. He said, and, and marry a lot, meaning that, that, that we should all strive as, as Muslims to get married. For verily, he wants to have, and he will have the biggest ummah community on the day of judgment. Because he wants us to marry, have children, ha increase the Muslim family and in the, the Muslim community. Those are just some of the ayats and ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding nikah. And we will mention a very important hadith after this, but we'll leave that for our first sitting regarding nikah, letting us know the importance of establishing the, the, the family and choosing a righteous sp a spouse. And in Islam... It is only permissible for a man to marry a woman and for a woman to marry a man regardless of what anyone says based upon their vain desires. That is completely un-Islamic and is not legitimate, illegitimate. And a person, if two men were to marry, so this is very important because of the sign of the times, what we've seen. If two men were to marry, it would be considered a, a very sinful and shameful act and it would not be recognized in the least amount in Islam, regardless even if there are people who are, because of their vain, wicked desires, who consider themselves Muslims, perhaps they could be, perhaps not, imams in South Africa, imam, some guy in America I've seen as well on the YouTube, claiming to be Muslim, and claiming, and, and, and trying to legitimize marriage. If he says that it's halal, that what he's doing is not sinful, but he, he believe, he's doing it. If he does it, he recognizes he's in sin, and he is taken, uh, he's married a man, he's just a wicked adulterer. And guilty of, the, uh, of homosexuality as well. But if he is a person who says that it is legitimate what he's doing, then we're fearful that he's left the fold of Islam. And we'll leave that hukum to say that he's a disbeliever for the ulama to look at do, is he uh, safe from by meaning doing to ta'wil fasid because of wicked misunderstanding and misinterpretation uh, 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 or is it a fact of khalas is she's following his desires he is uh, a disbeliever meaning he's tried to make what is unlawful lawful so this is something I had to make 10b because now we see it is an onslaught around the world especially in the west of legitimizing marriage between men and women, which is absolutely uh, unacceptable in the Islamic religion, and a Muslim that is that has that has that is tested with the uh, this issue of homosexuality, then they should make toba, repent to their Lord and strive their best to get away from that, but never try to legitimize that action and say it is from Islam because that is impossible and never will Islam accept that, never will the Muslims accept that, no matter even if some people of vain desires try to propagate that even a thousand years from now. It will never be a part of Islam because it contradicts the essence of Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.